The first thing that we're going to want to do when building the chain case cover is build the kickstart. And to build the kickstart, the first thing you want to do there is make sure that your bushings on your kickstart are completely pushed in and, and, and flat with this surface right here. And you also want to go through, and then you won't be able to see it here, but then there's another bushing here, and you want to make sure that that's pushed in all the way so that it's not pushing the, the uh, oil seal out so that the oil seal sits flush. Everything sits nice and flush because you ha what you have to do here is you're going to have to shim your kickstart. And to shim your kickstart, you can't have this sticking, these sticking out at all. Um, because if you do, you're not setting it correctly right from the get-go and you're going to end up with rubbing marks on your kickstart, you know, around this area here and wear on your clutch and, and possibly even uh, a ticking noise with your kickstart engaging in your first gear on your transmission. So first thing you do, make sure that those are pushed all the way in. Next thing that you want to do is you want to decide what shim or shims, combination of shims, you're gonna need to put this together. And the easiest way to do that is to just do it like this where there's no spring or anything and just put your kickstart in, push it all the way home. And when you flip it over here, you can see this space right here. And this space right here is what you're actually going to be shimming against. And through a combination of of either one or two or even three um, shims, you'll be able to determine what the right one is. Now, you can see I have this super uh, circlip that I, I'm gonna use. We sell these at Piss and Ported. Um, and if you put this in here and you pull, you can see there's a little bit of space there. It's moving just a little bit. That means that's not tight enough. It needs to be tight enough so that this this kickstart can't move in whatsoever. Because if it if you don't do it correctly and it's not all completely tight against here, that this is going to walk out and that bushing is going to walk out. And the next thing you know is that that's going to be grinding, and you're going to have you know you could have issues down the road with either your clutch or your kickstart or your transmission. So you need to make sure that it's, it's nice and tight against it um, like that. And then I can just take my, my circlip and, and uh, see if I can fit it in there. And if I can fit it in there, then I know it's gonna be all right. And that fits in with that groove just fine. So that way it means I know that uh, if I was to use this shim and put it together, it should work correctly. Now I went ahead and fit this circlip in the groove just so you can see there's no back and forth play. Um, so it won't be able to walk. It's totally pushed up against here and it won't be able to walk into the case, which is of paramount importance. I don't feel like enough attention is paid to this in a lot of the books out there because a lot of times you're going to see um, questions about these and about how this is set up where people start seeing wear on their kickstart and it's all because they don't have it shim correctly and there are a variety of shims out there in different widths and stuff and i have an assortment from mb and sil that i use and I like that, having an assortment on hand like that because the SIL ones are just a little unprecise. And I, in combination sometimes, sometimes I can get away with just one shim, but um, if I need a combination of shims, the SIL shims are extremely handy because I can usually uh, make what I, what I need to make happen with using those. And now we're gonna go actually fit the kickstart and before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and get this all nice and greased up so that it works correctly. You can even give a little bit in here if you want. It's not gonna hurt anything to have some grease in there. And then we'll actually fit the spring. 
and with the spring the the end on the the earlier ones don't have an end that kinks in like this but if you have a later one that has the kinked end like that the kinked end goes into the kickstart right here so just for your reference you set that like that locate it in the hole and then you can go ahead and do the same with this part and just like that and now the next thing we're actually going to do is we are going to fit the shim and the circlip on the other side so that's all connected and ready to go so we can go ahead and flip that like that Put this one here, and this one here. Let me just make sure that this is the set, the way it fits. Yep, this is the setup that fits. We'll go ahead and put the circlip on. And then you can just use the uh, circlip players to, to uh, make sure that it's all the way home just by dragging it like I did there. So, and then you can go ahead and, and uh, test it. Yep, turning just fine, no in and out movement. Now we're uh, ready to move on to the next step. And now the next step is actually going to be to preload the spring just a little bit just to put the kickstart on and we'll use the kickstart to hold it in place. So you can see right here, we're gonna clamp it right there in our vise. And if I didn't tell you to get a vise, get a vise. All right, the easiest way to preload it then is gonna be just to turn it and then if you, you remember how you clamp that in, you just wanna line that up about here on the case cover. And then from there, you actually just take your kickstart lever and uh, drop it on. And there we go, we are preloaded. And just as a double reference, um, when I said we're pointing it, we're pointing it to about here. So if you look here under the case, about there. And the reason that we do it to there is that it's just past that bolt right there. And the kickstart's at the kickstart engagement ramp is gonna be placed right in here. And we just need to make sure that this is located in that territory. Now, if you clamp your actual kickstart arm into your vise after you've preloaded it, you can uh, use that to hold everything in place. And also you can use it to negotiate around these bolts. And some people might want to uh, put the ramp in first and then preload it. That's certainly an option. But I like to do it this way because this way I can use the vise to do the preloading. It makes it a lot easier. And for these bolts, make sure you put just a little bit of Loctite on them. And make sure you have the spring washers in place too. I know with the Loctite, you might not think that you don't need it, but you know, a little double security never hurt anyone, so. We're not going all the way here, we're just gonna snug it up. And then as you can see, I can move this a little bit just to get it out of my way, so I can do this one. And that's just because of the way I clamped it. And then we're gonna go for the middle one. And that's it for that. Now for the next part, 
And for all the uh, anoraks or train spotters at home who are like, oh shit, you totally forgot to put the, you know, the kickstart pinion pin in there and a circlip and all that kind of stuff. Oh no, oh shit, no. Um, not really a big deal. I did that purposely just so because I've forgotten to do it before. And I thought, well, since I've forgotten to do it before, other people have probably forgot too. So I'll show you a trick. So you can just go ahead and take your circlip and put that in here. And then you can just take a 12 millimeter deep socket or you can use a 12, meter, 12, millimeter, 12 millimeter regular socket with an extension. Doesn't really matter. You just push it down until it snaps into place and your circlip's in. Next thing is gonna be that weird little stopper wa washer thing and that just holds the spring in place. You may need to take something just to finagle it to get it to uh, drop in correctly. And then we have our kickstart pinion and our spring. Spring just goes in like that. You can just drop it into place. I know when stickies are like, oh, I'll put some grease in there. Doesn't really matter. You can grease it. You don't have to grease it. It's all going to be covered in oil in short order, so it's really up to you. And now for the pin, I chose to try one of these fancy MB uh, hex head pinion uh, pins, ramp pins and you know we'll see how that goes but i thought it was kind of a neat thing because otherwise you got to use like a little tiny six millimeter wrench um, make sure you put a little loctite in this you don't want this walking out and you can just push on this until that hole lines up and get it started just tighten this up you push down just to release the tension on it. You just want to take that until it stops. That's it for that. All right, and now we're going to actually adjust the kickstart. So we need to loosen these bolts that we snugged up prior. Just a little bit. You know, just enough so that you can move it, but not so much that they actually hit this. As you can see, that one's already hitting just a little bit, so I gotta put that one just a touch. And then what you want to do here, or what you're trying to do, or your goal is, you can push on this just to take the tension off it. Then you can slide this over. And basically the idea is that you want this pin right here to sit right at the edge before it drops. So as long as it sits right at the edge before it drops, it's these teeth won't click on your first gear and you'll have the most kick that you can possibly get.